He's monitoring, I think, on Zoom. Uh, he's not on yet? Okay. Okay, the purpose of this meeting is we're going to hold five of these. They are to take input on what anyone, whether it be staff or anybody from the, from the uh, Springfield public, parents, staff, students, on what qualities they think we should be looking for in the next superintendent. And we'll take, we'll take good notes and we'll pass these on to the whole committee too. What experiences and qualities and that you think that we should be looking for in a person to be superintendent of schools. Um, now this is an official subcommittee meeting and I would start with a moment of silence and the pledge, but maybe we need to talk to the principal, find out why there's no flag in this classroom. <laughs> So I guess we will we won't do that. We'll we'll forego that. Okay, do we have the list, Patty, for we'll go in order of the way people signed up? Thank you. Okay, now. Someone from faith based, and I is it can, looks like it begins with a K, but I can't. Someone is there a minister here? Is someone from the faith based community? Oh, I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong one. Dr. Paula Starnes, you signed up first, so and you are Dr. Paula Starnes, it's uh. An employee and also is uh, works within Springfield, and I believe you live in Springfield as well, is right? No, I no. yeah, I moved out sometime below about fifteen oh. fifteen minutes from here. Okay. So I'm just gonna stand so people. Oh. Um. <laughs> if you want to turn your back to us, so you're looking at the screen. Okay, that's so. fine. So yes, my name is Dr. Paula Starnes and I'm so pleased to be here. I think that it's so important that we as a community get together to talk about who our next superintendent's gonna be. So I don't mind sharing with you that I intend to apply by the 29th. I, am, uh, I was born and raised in Springfield, right around the corner. I played soccer, uh, kickball, track. I went to Arlington Hope and Cathedral. And through the years after I got and graduated from uh, Catholic school, I then started to teach uh, in my college years in the public schools in Springfield. And we're going back about 30 years. And I saw some differences that I was concerned about, which is why I want to share with you here that I think we should talk about a superintendent that has roots here, that cares about this city, that cares about the students, that has um, a, a, an understanding of the diverse cultures that are within our city. I've been a teacher for 27 years. And uh, as an educator, I've seen where a lot of our, um, my colleagues have a, a great understanding of what it is to teach almost in a monolithic way. And, I, and, and that's why a leader in this district should try to broaden the scope of how our teachers teach our students and also respect our students' backgrounds. So that's what I wanted to share. Okay, Roots in the Community. Is Elle trying to encapsulate so that when we pass it on, is that? Understands the community, um, is willing to lead a, a community where our educators have an understanding of the diversity that's before them in their classrooms. Beyond teaching, somewhat, sometimes it's, it's almost in a Eurocentric pattern, and I'm guilty of that in my earlier years of teaching because I taught the way that I was taught, but as I've, you know, um, invested more in my education all the way into my terminal degree, my doctor of education degree, I began to understand the importance of uh, respecting each student's background. So let me stop being so wordy to answer the question, Mr. Collins. What do I see as important is that there's a leader in this district 
that respects the backgrounds of the students and leads the educators uh, in that same vein. Thank you. Okay. So I have leads educators to also understand our city students, our cities and students' backgrounds. Is it is it fair to say that it, implicit in that is you're looking for someone that would have worked in a diverse educational experience? That would definitely help in okay. their understanding. All right. Yeah. I thought I was hearing that vein that's, through that's what true. you were saying. That, yeah, thank you for that. For being there. Thank you. The second person who signed up is Karina Dice. Dice or D? Dice. 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 She's finishing taking notes or just go? You can go. Oh, okay, no. I'm listening. All right. So I'm here today um, representing a few things. I do work with Springfield Public Schools. Um, I have background. I started off as a para 15 years. Um, now I'm teaching also five years, so 20 years in the school system. Um, I also represent Springfield College, where I graduated and got my master's degree. So I'm really involved with Springfield as a community. I also organize events in this community where Springfield um, tied us in with YSET Academy. Um, over there, I can also talk about the um, knowledge as of children growing up, teens. Um, my son is 20 now. Um, we got involved with her, with YSET, where they had like a resume building workshop and things like that. So I wanted to share that. Um, it's very, very important in the Springfield community to have somebody who can lead, but somebody who cares also for the youth, for the adults, a little bit of everybody. So I'm here just to support today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zell. Uh, Charlie Holmes. A resident. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm hey, Charlie. Charlie Holmes, born and raised in Springfield, Massachusetts. Glad to be here. First of all, um, I will say, uh, just to um, agree with that, it should be somewhat, it's almost insulting to be looking outside of our area when we got qualified candidates here. I come from a family history full of teachers and educators, and I was educated in the school system. Also, so going outside this district and this area is really frustrating because what happens is you have to train a new person how to how to treat us, how to identify with us, and it's tiresome. And too often we have to do this. Every time someone comes in, you have to sit down and train this person for a year or two. All you're getting coming for is the salary. With someone that works for the bottom up cares. So we want someone that cares for our children, our community, and the residents in it. You know, to what you know, that's that's what we need. So when we have somebody qualified, it's like really truly a slap in the face. So we go outside of that. Like we don't have qualified people in Massachusetts, which has started school system in this country. It starts with us. Okay, so, and then, you know, the, the whole school system changed. I've seen a drastic change when they changed it and made this middle school thing. A southern thing, we already had different levels of kindergarten, elementary, junior high, high school. It worked fine until someone came from somewhere else and said, erase that. Mm -hmm. And there are problems ever since. Okay, changing our system that we created. So, uh, you know, it's frustrating, you know, and, uh, and I, you know, we need to do that, okay? That's, that's why I'm here tonight, because too often people don't speak out about this. These things, people come in and change everything that we have done. And uh, we, we really want to move forward with someone from here. It's really important to build up our people here. Even my daughter's in education, she's leaving here, because everyone else is leaving here. Someone has to stay back here and mold and educate and continue the successful learning. But as you bring in others from everywhere else, our people are leaving. So you know they get low quality, high paying jobs. They have nothing to work towards. You know, you know so um, that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. 
And another Springfield resident is Travis Teese. Teese. Travis? I only want to say just uh, to support. Um, I do believe we need to find someone who's from Springfield, in general, the city of Springfield, because it's important to know who you're dealing with as far as the students and faculty and residents. I think it's important that we find somebody to post our in our in our general vicinity, as Chuck said, and uh, Spider. Right. Thank you, Travis. Yeah. And didn't list whether it was a resident or employee, but it's Veronica Shippy. Okay. I don't have much to say. Um, basically, I'm here to support. I do believe that the roots um, in the community should, should stay in the community. I am from the Chicopee area, and I but I deal with a lot of foster kids foster kids who come from Springfield and immediately I transition them over to Chicopee seeing uh, because I seen a shift in Springfield school. Uh, one, one kid attended Springfield school and I went into the school and I was shocked at what I seen. Um, so I'm really looking for someone who understands diversity, understands IEP um, and and able to communicate what they're doing with the IEP in that school. And I feel like it's very important. I am getting that out of Chicopee and I'm hoping that the superintendent that we hire will do the same in Springfield. Okay. Uh, Clayton Robinson, Springfield resident. I'm here in support of Dr. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, T and Me. It's about pushing education. Education is extremely important, yeah. trying to increase the level. Um, I've known Dr. Paula for years, and I know she's passionate about that, and we'll do that. Um, for me, my daughter's 21. She just graduated from Springfield College, summa cum laude. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Springfield Public School, I feel proud of because she wasn't being pushed. She went to charter school, middle school, Graduated straight A's, high school, straight A's, charter school, right to Springfield College, straight A's, and now she's going to law school. I know Dr. Paul is going to push the limits of education, because for me, that's what it's all about. That's so, so all I got to say. Thank you. Did anybody else sign up that? I'm assuming it's one or both of you guys. <laughs> It's both of you. Desiree? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't have to. <laughs> the superintendent has to have, um, not just be a Springfield re resident, they, they need to be able to demonstrate their ties to the community that they're going to serve. And I, I'd like to see data that demonstrates in their educational history of the success in educating students. That's what I want to see. Yeah, like someone from an urban district. In a similar community? Yeah. Yes. Yes, where, wherever, if they, whatever they have done in education, I'm, I'm thinking we're not going to hire a lawyer or something. No, 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 we're, we're it sounded, we, we're here, Barbara and I are hearing you saying someone who has taught and has that kind of experience in an urban type setting, in a setting like ours. Yeah. Not That's necessarily urban. like a long meadow or, uh, or someplace that doesn't look like. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That they can, and they can demonstrate their success in educating children because we're urban district. All yeah. the country. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's important. Um, Poignant words for somebody who didn't want to speak. <laughs> Nakisha, were you not going to speak too, or are you going to? <laughs> it's my mom. Then I, uh, I grew up in Springfield. I just moved back last year for a job on the other side of this building. Um, on the other side of this building, yes, ma'am. Um, Once a mother, always a mother. For sure. She never gets a quick. It's her job. <laughs> 
I want to see some innovation. I want to see us be in 2024. There's a lot of things that we are doing that feels like we are in the dark ages. Um, I graduated in the 90s, and we were talking about the di digital divide at that point. Yeah. And we're fighting to, to make this so-called one-on-one computer that we keep these people keep bragging about that we have. We're fighting to make that a reality. That's not really happening. These students have a phone in their face all the time, but don't know how to use it in an effective manner to do something real in their life. So I want to see some innovation. Um, I want to see better training for the teachers. We have so many people who come in here from other industries. They're doing coming from different th backgrounds, and they don't have real training. They don't really know how to manage a classroom. They don't really understand how to implement a instructional strategy throughout the whole year. There's a lot of things. There's a lot to be desired with teacher training. So innovation, teacher training, get this technology in order. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michael. I'm just here to listen. How is your Oh, okay. yeah, listen. So you feel like we are. So listen. Yeah. I'm with the SVA. So. The of the SVA. Oh. Well, we're going to continue to shift. And you're more than welcome to stay with us. Um, we don't know. I would, I mean, there's no one's come in, but we did post it to last for a certain amount of time. So I feel compelled to sit here. Do you have some information to share with us? Pardon me? I said, do you have some information to share with us about how the search is going to go? The, the timelines, the... Oh, timelines. Um, the... A search committee was, a, not a search committee, a screening committee has just been formed. Okay, yeah. The role of the screening committee is to take candidates, potential candidates. See, when you, when you apply to become a superintendent of schools in Massachusetts, um, you're entitled to privacy, that your name not get out. Um, so the screening committee will be doing interviews of potential candidates that come through, that apply and meet the criteria. They will interview everybody. They'll rank them all. And then they will deliver what they believe are the, the either top three, between three and five candidates to this committee who will immediately pass it on to the full committee. And the full committee will hold public interviews for them. Um, right before we announced the finalists, the, let's, let's say there's, they give us five names. What often has, and I've, and I've done this a few times, is when you tell somebody your name's going public, they go, no, no, I, I, I don't want to do it. I'm out. Because um, what happens is you get sitting superintendents who apply because Springfield pays more, Springfield is a bigger place, or people who are looking for stepping stone or whatever reason they apply. Once they know their name's going to be publicized, they don't want the area where they're currently working to know that they're out looking, and they back out. Um, that happens. You're going to get one, maybe two, probably. That happens every time. Because uh, there's just uh, people out there doing searching. Yes, sir. That's why we want loyalty. You know, you got people hiding because they're just coming for the money. So when, when you don't hide, like someone like Dr. Paula, who's transparent, she's out there and been doing this for such a long time, and she's never hidden. And, you know, that, that means a lot to me because you got someone else coming in here. Now I'm just disclosing who they are, like they have to, because they only come in here for a paycheck. And then if they got another opportunity to leave, and that's the problem. We need somebody that's going to be here, somebody that's reachable and available at all times. 
And, um, you know, too often we go out there looking for someone to come solve our problems. But our problems should be solved within us, among us. We can work on things ourselves as a community. It makes us look really weak, just reaching out to other halfway across the nation, somebody that's hiding and asking them to please come help us. You know, just all our positions are being done like this, all over this, all over the city and state. If we're not reaching out to the east, begging Boston to help us, what about Springfield and the surrounding areas right here in Western Mass, Massachusetts? You know? It's funny you say reaching out to Boston. And Boston, Boston yeah, we can't like, like, we can't do nothing without Boston. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. At one point in history, and I'm going way back before anybody. Well, was the capital before that. No, no. I'm, <laughs> long before anybody in this room was born, <laughs> the, the, the Springfield School Committee used to just call Harvard and say, give us three names to interview. That's how they did a superintendent search. Yeah. They just yes. say, call Harvard, give us three names. They didn't do anything like what we're doing today. We need to look here first before we go elsewhere. And that's the problem. With all our jobs in here, that's what we always doing. Back in Boston, and my boss can help us if we're going to California. Did someone, someone just came in. Brian, Brian do you, would you like to speak? Is it Brian? Yeah, Brian. Brian. I live in this and I just walked in. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, everybody else has spoken. So you take your time, and when you feel like you want to say something. Okay. Or you can just tell us about the process. Once, and then the, the committee will hold public interviews. Uh, well, first, in between the time where we're given the names and we, and we set up public interviews, we'll go visit the districts where they come from um, to make sure, because you can put a lot of stuff on paper. You, you want to verify. You want to go and visit and see what's going on. Um, even if it's Springfield, um, you're going to visit the places they've worked and you're going to have private meetings with people so people are comfortable to give you their, their history and their background. Once that background's done, then the school committee will come together in a public session interview what's left of the candidates and take a vote um, last time by the time we got to the voting we were down to two committee. the whole school committee uh, latonia oh, naylor denise hurt no no just the the final vote is taken by the school committee right just you keep saying that screening committee yes they're on that's on the website that was just was it was posted on the website. Okay. So if you go yeah. on springfieldpublicschools.com, right on the home page, there's a big gray button that says superintendent search. And if you click on it, that's where we're keeping all of the updates. Okay. And you'll see the screening committee. It's 13 in 13 different people from all different aspects of the community. Unfortunately, no student. That one student asked to be on the committee. I have two questions. One, with the screening committee, is there a committee that weeds out candidates before the screening committee? Because I thought I heard that at your initial meeting. When they, when the outside firm opens up the applications, you're going to get people who apply who've never done half the stuff that the that the posting says that you should have done. So anybody who who has only been a teacher, anybody who is, you're gonna get lawyers. You Actually, Chickamee got lawyers apply when they did it. So you're gonna get people who do not meet the minimum criteria. They won't even go to the screening committee. The people who meet the criteria will go to the screening committee. So the committee before the screening committee, isn't that made up of the No, stuff that's a private know? outside firm. We were asked to use a private firm for that. Um, and the reason why I ask, and that leads into my second question, is because um, when it comes to innovative leadership, I myself have started a school that's now approved through DESI. And I was doing that simultaneously while teaching. 
And that being said, I often find as a licensed superintendent who had to become a superintendent in order to start the school that's licensed through DETSI, I find that um, a particular criteria is sometimes put in place uh, that may not necessarily speak to the populace. So I'm saying that to say um, we have people that are going, uh, that are applying from our district that have worked in central office. And there are so many um, issues that have risen to central office. First, first of all, I don't know that. I, we don't know who applied. We, it's probably safe to assume that some people have, but I don't really know of anybody and we're not going to know that. It's set up on purpose so that we don't know. Applied. And, and, and I can appreciate that. Um, I think I'm just kind of uh, phrasing a statement in the form of a question to say that um, in order to get something different to happen, there may be a need to look in uh, a, the initial criteria that you're going to get people who may not necessarily be um, connected to this city because as you mentioned, you'll be visiting different districts to see where they come from. Um, and as it's been stated here, there are people here that are qualified. And as you mentioned, you don't wanna have someone that's just taught for uh, close to 30 years. But if that person has also been a supervisor at AIC, for example, and if that person's also bought and renovated a Springfield Public School building and has had a youth program and school for over 20 years, that person might We're be getting considered. We're dangerously close to going through individuals' qualifications and whether they think they meet them. I, that's that, that's, that's not a conversation I, 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 that I should be I, having. I just kind of wanted to make that uh, statement and form it into a question that would the uh, criteria as it stands as I heard you all formulate in your initial meeting, do you think that criteria would I, take... I'm not going to answer who who I think does or doesn't meet the criteria. Oh, no, no, and, it's not a who. It's... it's uh, that's not something I should be answering at this point. Okay. We're supposed to be taking input on um, what you guys think we should be looking for. Like, I got a question on... Yes, sir. How much... The city of Springfield Department of Education spend it to find this new person to do this national search. What does it cost to us? I'm sure, it's costing like six figures. No, no. We the way we're doing it, it, we're making sure that it doesn't. We we are getting the services of Mr. Glenn Kutcher, who is the president of the Mass Association of School Committees, okay. who's giving us all kinds of expertise and avenues on where to apply that. And that's coming at no cost. So this whole process costs at no cost? There will be a cost because we're using the private firm. Yeah, I'm using the private firm as well. That's what I'm talking The about. private firm is just, it depends upon how much work gets assigned to them. It wasn't, but it will not be six figures. Okay, well, it's going to be close to six figures. I hope I hope yeah. it won't that's be anywhere cost. near there. That's what it costs for a private firm. That money could be... Well, no, we're not. We're not. We didn't hire a firm to do a full search, sir. I understand that even a partial search. I've dealt in that industry before. It costs probably you probably spend about fifty thousand to do that. To provide some but but they're not doing the search. They're taking the results of the half of the search that Glenn Kutcher told us the process to follow, and they're doing some screening and some and work with the screening committee and things that we can't do. They're, they're not doing a search. Okay, I understand that. What is it costing us? I don't know until we know how much work. So far, they've had little. So it's not costing five dollars, or it's costing uh, under six figures it's somewhere. It's going to be way under like some kind of range. I, I, I mean, not not now. The next meeting, can we get like a range so we can know what it's costing our community? Until I until I know. Until we have an idea as to how many candidates are going to be interviewed, how many interview meetings there's going to be, the length that we expect those meetings are going to be, because they're staffing those meetings, we we wouldn't have a handle on that. Okay. Um, but it is not it's not like we hired one of these firms that are seventy thousand, ninety thousand, a hundred thousand to go do a search. We didn't do that. 
Yeah. We looked at those. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, they do that. Since, though, you did, though. Yeah. We did look at those, and they were, as far as we thought, were concerned. They were not. They were not getting. And the, the downside of doing, of hiring some of those firms, is they've got a cradle of their own candidates that they tend to shop to different places. Exactly what I'm going to say, yes. So, anyways, you guys, excuse me, I've got to teach a Bible study. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So that's an honorable thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, question. Um, you said that on the screening committee that you wanted to have a student be present so that they could give their raise was the Pioneer Valley Project at any point consulted about maybe a student who'd want to run? Because they've been very vocal. They've right? been very vocal. It was advertised in all the schools. It was advertised at every place that they've been reading about our agendas and everything. Mm -hmm. And not one came from. Yeah. And that's not open anymore. That's open. No, no, that's called the, sc the screening committee is already, already formed. We were as surprised as anybody. Yes, yes. We really were. Because we there's been a lot of student yes. input this year. And I was shocked. I mean were, twelve no years ago, was it twelve years ago when we did the last one or thirteen, whatever it was. Wow. Um there was at least three or four people, kids that applied. Not one this time. I we were just shocked. We didn't know what to do that night. We were just like, oh my god. We really wanted their input. Really so what we what that. we ended up doing is adding another another parent up because that's the closest thing to student input is parent input. Yeah, and they can also attend these, Chris. Right, they and they've yeah. been and we've got all kinds of messaging going out encouraging them to attend here and, and give us their input on what we should be looking for. My next meeting will be you said uh, it'll be next week. The next meeting. They're every Tuesday except for school vacation week gotcha. for the next. Four weeks beyond today. Um, they're in different locations. They are in different locations. They next are is, um, central. Yep. central is next week. And next week it's specifically for the staff, according to the information I read. Well, at one point we were we were going to limit it to staff. Uh, it's probably going to be mostly. Did they advertise it as just staff? Well, no, the, not just staff, but staff-related concerns or issues. Encouraging staff. To well, he's encouraging staff to attend. Yeah. At at one time, we you know there were things that was like, oh, let's do this for this community. That then letting everybody come to all of them because you limited people to a a date, and that was it was more open that way. The ninth is at DeBerry Swan, the new school in their cafeteria. The twenty third is at. Uh, Lincoln, Brightwood in their cafeteria, and the thirtieth is at Frederick Harris in, I think their library. You guys checked out the the video. Do you remember in Frederick Harris where where it's going to be? Sorry, Frederick Harris. Do you remember what room you you checked oh, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Library. Okay. Oh yeah, library. So next week is central. Next week is central. Yeah, we had, we wanted to make sure we had connectivity, so that if people wanted to zoom in, if they couldn't get here, that people did have the ability to zoom in and give comment as well. So they're rushing. Yes. Oh, I probably should have told you that. I guess. <laughs> Don't worry. None of you did anything to embarrass yourself. I thought you all could. <laughs> okay. The questions. I want to. Um... Clarify. She wrote down emphasis in technological literacy. Also, the resources that we need. Like, there needs to be computers in the school. For there really is one laptop for every student. I don't. I don't know why you think there isn't, but there is. But yeah. <laughs> and I, there has to be because from what I gathered in, in my situation is that during COVID. That was true. Everyone got a laptop. The way that that was, uh, the inventory was taken over the years, that has dwindled down. We we don't have every, a laptop for every student. That's not real. Right. Well, if you're not getting it, you need to call, start with your principal and then go to the CSO 
there is money in the budget that purchases a laptop for every student in this system. We replace them every three years. And we keep the ones that are not trash, that are still usable, and keep them for backups. Um, that was a commitment that the school committee made about seven years, six or seven years ago, and put money away. And when we first implemented it, kindergarten and first grade shared. They, and they didn't have laptops, they had iPads. Uh, but now they, they have individuals. Um, we're even getting some into the preschools. I mean, the, the quicker they know how to function with electronic devices, the better off they're going to be. Mr. Collins, if you want to figure, we have 33,527 Windows devices in the district. 33,000. 33,000. So that's laptops and desktops. That doesn't include iPads, which is a couple thousand. And we do VR headsets as well. So we do have a lot of technology. Um, so, this is good, yeah, because if there isn't, if there's a problem, we should get that fixed. Yes, definitely. Uh, Shireen Robinson. Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, is that why? Oh, yeah. Okay. So my, my question is concerning the laptops. Um, are we teaching the guardians and the parents how to use them? And also, how are you trans um, transitioning the younger ones from iPads to Android? Because those are two different systems. We're not using. Yeah. No. They're. Their, their teachers are teaching, are transitioning them from system to system. Okay. Um, and they're, they've got specific programs that they use. Um, so their teachers have been trained on them. They have also teachers who train teachers. And so they are, they're being used on a routine basis. So, yeah, they're transitioned over. Uh, what about the parents and guardians? that because you have grandparents, you have even parents that might not be familiar with systems. So are, is there anything in place to teach them we, how to use these programs so that we can watch and see what our kids are doing? I have to check. We had, we had some of that going, especially when we first started with it, and especially during COVID, because it was so important. Um, I'll have to check with the technology department, or I can check with the the chief schools officers and see whether if there's any zones from schools that are running. Some schools do it on their own. They, you know, they, they have run something for parents. I'll have to check and encourage it if they're not, because if we haven't done it since COVID, there's a group out there probably that needs some help. And my last question concerning this, so the ACP program that was doing discounts for people to get you know, for internet and stuff is ending in April. What are we doing for that, for people that need assistance with internet? Uh, I don't know. I know they're working on something with Comcast. But I, I, I'm not sure what that. Who's I, working on something with Comcast? The IT department. I know Comcast and others, they've looked at other ways. They've even looked at creating a network and that. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. So that means when it ends in April, until you guys figure out something, kids are probably not going to have internet. No, I think kids will always have a, a device that allows them to get on the internet one way or the other. You have to have access to it. So if I can't afford the bill at home, then my child doesn't have access at home. So then what is what is my alternative until they figure out something? Right now they're giving and, and I they're giving some kind what's the module they're given so they can use they were, during COVID they were given hotspots, families hotspots. To not have internet connectivity or could not afford it. They were given T Mobile hotspots mm -hmm. that grab cellular and pushes out Wi Fi to devices. So that's still available now? I'm not particularly yeah. sure. It is available. It um, is, yes. The, the tech coordinators of each school should know how to get more hotspots if need. Okay. I know we do. Yeah. So if you talk to your school and you tell them that you don't have internet service, they should be able to find you a hotspot device, which okay. gets you, gets the kids on so they can do their work. These gentlemen are in charge of IT, so if they, if they don't uh, have <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that statement, but 
<laughs> this is what it looks like. I think we need to, I know what a hot spot looks like, but I'm, I hear what you're saying, but if it's not available at school, who do we contact? Like, I'm new to the area. The so principal, good. always start, always start with the principal. Okay. Always okay. start with your school principal. Because they should be able to get it. If they can't, they can get the answer. Okay, perfect. Thanks. People who have a, have a habit of wanting to go someplace else, then the schools don't know what's going on. Okay. I'll always start with your principal. Thank you. Did you say you wanted to add something? Uh-huh. Sorry. So I grew up in Springfield. This is actually the fourth school system I've worked in. So I know that this is not a unique thing to Springfield, but we have an issue with student and community engagement. People don't even want to do this. When I listened to you say that there was no students who applied for the search committee, it's very concerning. But I see it in the students, even in the whole process. They don't, they don't have that, like, I grew up in a family of educators. I, it was instilled in me that education was a stepping stone and something that would help to improve my life. They don't have that belief built into them. That's not happening. So I mean, I, I think that it's really important that we have somebody who, who understands that the engagement needs to be addressed. Yeah, and we created a new department last year to do that. Um, and it's not only the, uh, you mentioned the Pioneer Valley Project has been very active. This year, uh, we created a new, we reinvigorated this student-wide, the system-wide student council. So, you know, they've got them in their own schools, but they've got one that goes for the whole system where representatives, and one of them sits on the, school committee and it used to be at one for the year they decided to change it and they did one per quarter so we've had a few nobody applied out of there either which that but kids are working kids are playing sports kids are you know that they, they get busy too so to be on that committee is time it's time consuming to stay up there. yeah very time so if I may ask, where is this information being shared for people to attend or apply for these things? I'm talking about student base, because we're all involved with children and students, and we have these networking. It was, so where is it was in the newspaper. It was all over our the school department website. It was on the city's website. It was announced on the radio. It, we put it out when we were looking for people everywhere, casting as broad a net network as we could, hoping to get people. Can I ask a question, Chris? Yes. Do you have some suggestions of other places that we're missing? Um, yeah, I think we could start as of networking and, like he said, well, newspaper. Children don't read newspapers anymore. <laughs> I'm just being honest. They're online. You, you know, they go to places where we know we'll reach them or get their attention. So I might not have a list for you today, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what we're always okay. We're always looking always for new. Looking for. We do the city, we do all of the uh, neighborhood councils too, because they're active with kids. Mm -hmm. And we send things to all the neighborhood councils. Before we go on to something, there's a, a Derek Sams who came in and liked to speak. Derek. Derek, did you want to speak? Okay. <laughs> yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I am here to support Dr. Collins. I, uh, Bishop Sam's uh, Goodness Outreach Ministries. Um, the church is situated at uh, eight fifty one, but I'm at the moment. But I've watched. Uh, Back to more over the years, how she uh, she's taken on to kids, and the, 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 she 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 actually have a heart a heart of love, and they just cleave to her. Every time she uh, puts something together with the kids, it's just super excellent, and I believe if she if she's given the chance to stand in front and to lead in that era. She would do a marvelous job. She would do a marvelous, marvelous job. I remember once we had something at the uh, the Sheraton Hotel, and uh, 
she only have like two days or so to put together a dance with the kids. And it was marvelous. Marvelous. What she taught them in two days, they got a beer. Great. So she's the person. She did a great job. Thank you, man. I, um, and, and I appreciate um, those kind words. But what, what puzzles me about a school district that has, it used to have 26,000 students, and now we're down to about 23,000 because parents and students have fled. What puzzles me is that um, to have these committees in place and students not be on, you know, the selection committee, to have programs where when YSET puts on a program, we have thousands, not, not a few, we have thousands. So it is every time I put on a program, we have thousands. So it's, it's hard to understand with teachers and educators and supervisors and executive directors right in your midst that like it's, anytime I attend something that's put on, um, it seems uh, put on by the schools. It, it doesn't seem as uh, well attended. So there's there's got to be something going on when it comes to tapping into your um, uh, well established resources. I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I, I'm not going to. So to I'm going to help. So I'm a parent. I came here, I've only been in, in Springfield schools for six years. I've been in Springfield for six years, okay? My son went to Congress High School. So to answer your question, I get some information to us. I couldn't figure out how to get my son in sports. I didn't know what the actual school programs was. High School Congress a website was not up to date. I wanted to be involved. I tried to get in contact with the, P, um, get involved with the PTO. The first year I actually was, which was weird for me. But I'm like, okay, you know, um, I was involved. Then new um, administration came in. I didn't hear from the person that was in charge of the PTO. I haven't heard from anybody there. Some of the, the teachers that I was involved with, ghost, you know, it was just like ghost all of a sudden. So I don't know if it's individual schools because I don't have experience with the Springfield system, but I know commerce had a, because I wanted to be involved. I want, I, where was the information? When I went there, when I could, because again, I'm working, I have many things that I need to do now. On top of trying to keep a young boy on the straight and narrow, that's another whole full-time job. So there was nowhere to get the information. To go here, go there, go here, go here. They're not there, they're not there. They can't, you know, when they get involved, when they call, I might be at work, I can't accept that phone call because they're here whatever time. So the communication for the, and this, again, my personal experience at Commerce was I couldn't get the information. Now, when there was, you know, if I could get in contact with the teachers and stuff, they weren't gay. Now, let me just say, I love Commerce. I was very surprised. I came from a sub, a white suburb, and he was behind. I was like, wait, what? So it was a lie. So I learned that, that was a lie. It was wonderful to see Black male teachers. It was wonderful. To, I mean, it had been so many years that I had seen teachers that wanted my child to succeed. That, I mean, I was, I loved it. So it was a great experience. But as far as, you know, you can look at me and say, hey, you weren't engaged and stuff. I tried. But the information was not readily available and easy access, easily accessible. So can I ask you, where, where do you, where would be a convenient place for information to show up for you? to see it and get it. I'm thinking instead of going to look, because in Chicopee, they have this website, you got to go on. I'm not, I don't have time. I work, I got to do this, homework and cook and all that stuff. So media, you can find a way to push out the information, right? Or have some sort of information. If you go into a new city, there's an information place where you can go, okay, where is your attraction? Where can I do this and do that? I don't know, but we should. There should be a way to push that information out. Google's doing it. Everybody, other than, other than social media, 
Well, you know what? I don't know. I don't know too much. You know, she's is. absolutely right. But I know there are several times that I put my email down for whatever thing. Why can't we just push out emails? Why can't there just be a, 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 um, a thing where it's like, okay, get your information. Stop making the kids responsible because we know the kids ain't going to get up, give us no information. We know that. I don't know why we play. They, they don't care. They barely pay attention to what they're supposed to be paying attention to. So, I mean, but if you want to find us, you can find us. So, I, I mean, I... So, email. Even, that's what I'm hearing. I think email. emails. emails I mean, email. just even if it's just a general one, whoever, say, hey, push it out there. I think there could be a place. PTO, if there's PTOs in place and they have all these emails, they can push it out as well. But somewhere where it's a quick thing, you could get texts. Whatever they were using that for. Yeah. So that's what people are going to respond to. Everybody, everybody is not, you know, just sitting at home, not doing nothing, sipping coffee and watching soap operas. Some of us have two or three jobs and we got to go in between it or whatever else. So get that information to us and say what you want to get it to the kids because we will become engaged. Another part, excuse me, will be Dr. Paul. How did she get the information out there that people know? So that I can say, hey, I know you. So let me, you know, let me just tell her. We don't have to be friends, but I know you. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Okay, I'm so I'm more of a push system than a pull system. For mm. so that's basically. I got to go. I'm sorry. Thank, thank, thank you for coming. Finish your homework, young man. <laughs> well. Gary Bernice. Oh, tried, you. you tried to sneak in the back room. Back. <laughs> Back in the room there. I'm not here to say anything other than to hear everybody's thoughts. Oh, okay. Right. Three people started out that way, but then. <laughs> it's, it's, it's started off like, but it's great that everybody's here. I didn't see some. Yeah. Faces. Their faces. The other guy wanted to say anything. The one that came in that's sitting there. Did you want to speak? No. Say. Sir? Well, I'm going to go. Um, my son graduated last year, but uh, you're right, you um, over the years I've tried to, because uh, I have three children, children we kept up our own now, uh, the system was, because when I was a kid growing up in the 70s and 80s, uh, you know, my mother was at the PTO, PTA meetings, whatever, to move forward, so I've almost done that tradition with my children, but it has been kind of short, you know, um, in this last decade. Uh, me and um, all three of my children, you know, going through the system. So somewhere along, the system needs to be fixed as far as communication. You know what I mean? Because you know, when I come into these meetings, I'm not getting, you know, what I'm looking for. Because, you know, a lot of times, excuse me, you know, as, as a black male, we're uh, sometimes stigmatized that we don't have an interest in our children's education. That's not true. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I was raised. Um, my mother was there. For me, so I've been there for three of my children. But, um, you know, going ahead, um, you know, as far as the system here, the school board, there, need, there needs to be more or better communication with both groups, parents, like the lady saying, you know, you know, and the educators as well. You know, because uh, our school system, to be honest, just around America, it's just, it's just a mess, you know, what's going on in our society. Overall, right. Uh, and I'm here to support for uh, you know Paula, my dear friend, and as well as every child in school here in, in Springfield as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we meet next week, Central, next week. Central time. Central High School. Yeah, yeah. Next to the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, so you guys. Have However, these meetings are really to take input on the qualities we're looking for, not to advocate for candidates. Okay. Um, I mean, this is a this is a more informal meeting, and people were talking, and it was we had time, but as far as people advocating for a candidate, we don't even know who they are, and it's it's really there. We want to hear from the public. What should the committee be looking at? What should they be looking for? So I'm I'm to blame for that because that's okay. Um, I have made sure that the process be open because I was at the initial meeting, and I just felt like. I would not be uh, considered fairly because of uh, certain things that go on in the district. So I wanted to make sure that I made this process as open as possible and shared with as many people as possible that I put my hat into the ring. So I'm, I'm uh, at fault for um, 
even having this crowd here because without the people that I contacted, who would be here? Yeah. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> but you're right. A lot of people. You guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if you came specifically to support somebody, it wasn't obvious. You spoke to what you thought. No, it's not. It's not. No. It's like I saw this in my email. No. And she kept reminding me and reminding me. Okay. Ooh. Who's, was there a little role reverser going on there? Someone? Yeah. The apple doesn't fall far, does it? You know, it's good to 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 have the community to come out and 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 have their input. You know, like I said, it's 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 not about us. It's about what the community want, and that 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 makes a difference. That makes us feel good when we have people come out and voice their opinions and their concerns and what we're looking for in a in a superintendent and we're going to take this at heart you know we really are really are I mean, going forward i will tell you that especially as the groups get larger and i expect central would be quite large if someone does stand up to announce their candidate they're going to be asked to this isn't the forum for that. Please speak to what the qualities we should be looking for. This was a more kind of an informal room, and it was different, so more like a dining room discussion. So, it was a question about the process. Yeah. Yeah. That was the purpose of the meeting, yes. What you said was important too about the computers no, and, I, and, and I was I was just the commerce um the commerce principal does not answer to the school department. They answer to the empowerment zone. They are given a lot of autonomy. So some things that principals at other high schools, the constant communication they put out, they're not required to do they do if they want to they don't have to if they don't want to so they run a little differently i'm not sure if that's why their website wasn't up to date or there wasn't a list of the current sports or or anything um so what because i work for the empowerment and i was told that the empowerment zone was was born out of the failures of the schools and they had to be taken over in a way. Correct me if I'm wrong. The empowerment zone was born out of a, the last DESE secretary set a bar for MCAS and said that anybody who achieved below a certain level, they could deem as being underperforming and they could take them over. Um, state. The state could take them over. We had some middle schools at the time were right at that threshold where the state could come in and deem them underperforming. The school department voluntarily joined together with Empower Schools and created an entity, a separate entity to use some innovative techniques. And it became what's known as the Springfield Empowerment Zone. So while all of you are, you're a Springfield employee, your administrators answer to the Empowerment Zone Board of Directors. They have to follow major policies, but as far as whether they do things in a specific way or curriculum, they've got wide latitude. So every school does something different. Um, 
So that those schools were put in what was called the empowerment zone. You will notice that the state took over three districts. None of them ever came out of state control, and none of them ever made any progress. Then you're saying it's three districts in our area? No. Well, no. Well, Holyoke is the closest one. And I, they just announced, was it this morning? Yeah. yeah. That they're going to let Holyoke come out from the empowerment zone. They didn't give her I mean, power and zone. See, from, from this uh, state control, they didn't give us a reason. They didn't say that their test scores had gone up. They didn't say but the curriculum had improved. Some kind of intermediary, like it's not going straight back to full control. And they're going to transition it slowly, turn back authority, I guess, is what they're saying. The other two are in similar situation to Holyoke. And I would imagine they're going to get, Desi's going to get their doors beat down by those two now saying, we so want local we control back. From the zone that would put them back in a place where they are. We have seen results in some of the schools in the zone. Some of the schools technically are performing so well, that they're not in any trouble. They. Should they be in the zone or not at this point is a debate because, you know, what was the zone created for? You take TAG, you take the, the new one. There's, they've made several different high schools. They're performing comparable to our schools. Um, and in some, But that's the part that kind of, because that feels divisive, the our schools, the zone schools, the... And, and we're all in the same city. When I say our schools, I mean the, like the, the honors is a high school. It performs comparable to high schools that aren't in the empowerment zone. Um, TAG is a middle school. It's performing comparable or in many cases better than some of the similar schools that aren't in the empowerment zone. Um, there's a couple of others in there that are performing that way. And it's, so it's. So is there ever a plan where all of the schools are back under? That's, that's a good, they never, they never built into the agreement. How do you exit? They never built in there. How, how do you exit? And if, you know, is this really a way to take schools that are struggling and improve them? Well, if you're no longer struggling, should you cycle out? and cycled in someone that needs some help. I mean, it's... Well, I think that's something that the new superintendent needs to address. I think it's something that somebody that, that needs addressing. I think you're correct. What is this information available? How long has it been in this empowerment? How long has this empowerment thing been going on? Uh, okay, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Yeah. Almost 10 years. Yeah. And how would somebody who just came, how would we even know that this information? They're, they like do all I the communication it. with, the Empowerment Zone does the communication with the parents. Okay. They do all the outreach with the parents. Because so if I had a concern about the, the principal, I would need to go to Empowerment. And would I even be heard? Is it the same thing run like this? I mean... The principal, it, you should, the principal should get you your answers. If they don't, the difference being with that school is you wouldn't go from the principal to a chief schools officer. You'd go to the director of the empowerment zone. Laura, did you come to speak or to observe? I came to observe. Okay. Wow. Okay. Did I capture your sentiments about the ZEP correctly? someone with knowledge of the Springfield Empowerment Zone Partnership who can address its role and timeline? Communication. With the parents, people who are, you know, that we didn't even know it was that. that we didn't even know that. Go ahead, Gloria. To this lady, Dr. I'm sorry. I'm 
Dr. How to get your name. I'm Dr. Um, Gloria Williams. You had a question about the empowerment zone and parents and families, how you get information. Yes, me. So if you will give me your name and contact information after the meeting, I will share some information with you because I um, have a consulting group and this is what we're doing with the empowerment zone right now is trying to get families and engage them um, in the um, work of the empowerment zone and help build school council so parents and students will have a voice. And so if after the meeting, you share that with me, I have your information. That I, I, you, know what? Of it. you were at one of the meetings? No, oh. you know what? When I was in the school thing, they had somebody who was doing that too and I still haven't heard from anybody yet. My son's not graduated. So, and I'm not blaming you because you oh, know I'm just, I'm just saying, it, again, I'm I'm so, you know, so. no, I appreciate it because I want to know because I would like to actually, I'm part of the community. I like to help, but I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's nice. But again, I signed up for that twice, two years in a row. So. Certainly, yes. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think another thing that needs to be addressed is fairness and budgeting. There have to be, because this feels like y'all playing with money, not specifically, but it feels like we're, we're, we're moving money around, moving resources around, we're doing things that are manipulating what it appears to be happening, but we're not really getting better results. So I don't whoever's know. coming in to, to address what we're... If this was actually a meeting where we should be debating that back and forth, I'd have some things to say. But, but this is not... Okay, okay, but again, it's not our topic. Whoever's coming in as a superintendent okay, needs to understand what, how the budget is put About in place, budgeting how and the money is, is allocated, and how that affects the students, and and how that affects the different schools, the way right. things are run. So knowledge and you, you, actually, so knowledge put it and that way, I really, their theory of budgeting would be very important to know. Yeah, what is their yes. theory central office oriented? Is it school oriented? That That's an excellent point. That's something that. That, that, that we need to know how, yeah, they, how, how do they think about how the money is allocated. Excellent yes. point. And is it going to be transparent? Will it be transparent? That's the word. And able to be deciphered by everybody and not just college educated people that we can, that everybody can understand it. No, I'm still in that. <laughs> That's not right. Thank you. Someone who's astute about educational budgeting with a commitment to transparent communication in plain speak, not education East. Well said. <laughs> well, they have good line enough. I don't No one has come in in about 15. He has some. Did you want to speak? Oh, a great leader has to be a leader with integrity. And without integrity, then that person would not be a good leader. So, when you ask me, why don't we have I like that that's in, in big letters, such, a, <laughs> such an important quality. What does everybody think? Does anybody think people are going to continue to coming? Or do, do you think calling in at 6.15 is uh, fair enough? Or? All right, we'll give it to 6.15. Any other thoughts? But I'm very appreciative of you coming out. Me too. And 
slow pace of this actually, I think, has worked out where people thought more about what others said and then and then gave out some things. Um, Twelve years ago, when we did it, they were bigger. You could hardly keep your breath in between the thoughts coming out. Um, this was very nice pace. I think you'll find that the more we talk about this evening, you might have more people involved and people showing up to say what they feel. I, I expect the next one will be very crowded because it's at Central, and a lot of staff will just automatically tend to migrate there, I think. Um, not just Central staff, but other staff. <laughs> Staff's going to add a lot. Say that again? With staff, it's going to add a lot. Yes. Yeah. We may even get some students there. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. It'd be, it'd be great. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be about other students. You said it was low. A week from, a week from today. No, it's not close to anyone. So. No, they're all open. No, not the the the, the, the community. search community. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's all. Yeah. When they come to the meeting, they can still voice their input. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's what we're they hoping. Can. Yes. Nobody here works at Central, do they? Yeah. Let's get a message out to Tad that he kind of announced it a couple of times for the students. Maybe we can encourage them. At least we get maybe some Central students. Yeah. And all of them. Yeah. Students here. Yeah, we can help them. Yeah. I'm going to leave you, but uh, thank you. I just want to say you need a superintendent with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart. Yes. It's special. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm an excellent leader, but somehow I overlooked the time, and I don't know why I was looking at a six o'clock time. I think maybe it was for a meeting, upcoming meeting. Mm -hmm. I so perhaps the same thing. Well, we tried to, we purposely said it five to six thirty, knowing that what happens with all of us is sometimes we get home. And it's uh, I'm not going, but at five you're you know you're not quite settled in yet, and you could still come at six and still be okay. Oh, it was yeah. Oh, I you're saying six o'clock. There was a meeting. I think. Oh, well, yeah. Well, six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm all people were impression that it started at six. B just meet my. My error because I have six o'clock down and or something else on okay. a different day. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're correct. It, it, we all leave off at six o'clock. You did too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So then that's close. Because they're odd. That's just the 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 odd. Oh. Yeah. I'm not sure. About okay, that. someone gave up that information. Yeah. Right. yeah. Confusing. That's what it was. Confusing. Times. Yeah. Well, pass it back that they're all five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. <laughs>